the ASEAN Plus One Summit and the East Asia Summit were held successfully. There was a frank discussion of the South China Sea and the leaders in Phnom Penh reaffirmed the importance of dealing with the South China Sea disputes peacefully and in accordance with international law and the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, whose 30th birthday we celebrate next month. In addition, in addition, something new happened. We witnessed the first meeting of ASEAN plus six, the leaders of ASEAN plus those of the following six partner countries, China, Japan, South Korea, India, Australia and New Zealand met and they launched a new negotiation to conclude a free trade agreement to be called the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, which in the ASEAN family we pronounce as RCEP. The 16 economies of this grouping make up one-third of total world GDP. So if we succeed in achieving RCEP, this will be a very considerable free trade area. Let me now try to explain to the non-trade specialists what is the difference between the TPP and, and RCEP. Um, I think all of you know that there is an institution called APEC, right? Can, any, anybody never heard of APEC? Please put up your hand. Good. You see, the advantage of reading the Straits Times is that you are well informed. <laughs> so we have a, we have an institution called APEC, which whose headquarters is here in Singapore, in, in Heng Mui King Terrace. APEC is a unique institution. It is not uh, an institution of uh, states, but of economies. And two entities which are not states, Hong Kong and Taiwan, are members of APEC. There are 21 economies in APEC. When APEC leaders met, maybe 20 years ago, in Bogor, Indonesia, they announced that their collective vision is to achieve free trade in the Pacific. And this collective vision will be eventually embodied in a form of a trade agreement called FTAAP, Free Trade Agreement of the Asia-Pacific. When you are dealing with 21 quite diverse economies, it will be very difficult to no negotiate the FTAAP in one go around a huge negotiating table. So four small economies, Brunei, Chile, New Zealand and Singapore, started something called TPP. We decided to negotiate and adopt a free trade agreement linking these four economies but this template is open-ended. <clears throat> Anybody can join us. And over time, uh, from four, it is now 11. But because America is such a big gorilla, when a big gorilla enters a room, it sucks out all the oxygen and, and, and nobody notices that there are other people in the room <clears throat> or that the TPP was not started by America but by these four little countries. When I reminded an American friend at lunch yesterday, uh, Warren, she, she is a lovely woman, she said something to me that broke my heart. She said, but the four don't matter, do they? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the American mindset, you know. Yeah. So I said, well, to the four of us, we do matter. <laughs> so my, my point is that the TPP is a means, it's a means to an end. And the end we want to achieve is a free trade agreement of the Asia-Pacific. It is open-ended and China can apply to join. But China has uh, so far declined to join 
because China has a misperception that the TPP is another way in which the United States is trying to dominate the region and to exclude China. And we have just launched a new negotiation for another major trade agreement, RCEP. So the question I want to ask is, which is easier to negotiate? The TPP, which will eventually lead to FTAAP or RCEP reset? Which is easier to negotiate? Theoretically, it should be easier to negotiate reset. Why? Because ASEAN already has FTAs with each of the six partner countries. We have FTAs with China, with Japan, with uh, South Korea, with Australia, New Zealand, with India. So in theory, it will be easier to, to negotiate this FTA with 16 countries. But as, as the Americans say, the devil is always in the details. And having negotiated the US-Singapore FTA, I can assure you that negotiating trade agreement is never easy. So I do not underestimate the difficulties in negotiating reset. Let me conclude. I believe that under the leadership of Barack Obama and Xi Jinping, the US and China will live at peace with each other. I believe that China and Japan will not escalate their dispute over Senkaku Diaoyi into a full-scale conflict. I believe that the European integration will not fail and that the Eurozone will survive and become even stronger. I believe that ASEAN will remain united and that ASEAN will continue to play a central role in the evolving regional architecture of the, of the, the, the region. Finally, finally, and this is important for us, all of us, while the Doha round is going nowhere, it is very important to keep the momentum of trade liberalization alive. And at least in our region, Trade liberalization and integrate, economic integration are life, and they are being driven by the two complementary processes of TPP and RESET. So this is a good news. In view of all the above, my prognosis for 2013 is that it will be a more peaceful and prosperous year than 2012. Thank you very much.